that to the letter with his famous 12 anathema. And he sent delegation to, to give this letter uh, to Nostorius. Uh, St. Cyril made the acceptance of anathema against Nostorius a condition to be readmitted. Think about the Council of Ephesus. There's some detail about the arrival of the bishops to show how it took long and because there's a dispute about why St. Cyril started the, the council. Uh, on November 1943, Emperor Sodus sent official invitation to the bishop to gather for ecumenical council to be held in Ephesus in June 7, 331 the Feast of Pentecost. Many of the hierarchy began to arrive before Pentecost. The first one to arrive was Nostorius. Nostorius was first to arrive with six, 16 bishops. The representative of the emperor, Count Candidon, arrived with an armed guard. Count Irenaeus came with Nostorius in a private capacity, just to help him. St. Cyril arrived a few days, few days before Pentecost with 50 bishops. St. Shinoda the Archimandrite accompanied him. St. Cyril was highly welcomed by Bishop Memnon of Ephesus because he's Egyptian and his local clergy people. Bishop Memnon of Ephesus gathered 52 bishops from his province. Ju Juvenal of Jerusalem arrived in June 12 with 16 bishops. Flavian of Philippi arrived with a delegation from Macedonia. Bishop Celestine delegation, uh, he sent two Italian uh, bishops and one priest, but though they arrived very late, they arrived on July 10, and more than one month than the time. The Bishop of Cartaga was represented by Deacon Basil, who informed the council about the death of San Augustine. And San Augustine, he passed away in August 430, and Jesus telling them in June. And the attack of barbarian tribe which made the coming of bishop from North Africa impossible. John of Antioch, that's very important, was late in arrival. He arrived with 26 bishops in June 26. The opening of the council. Due to the delay of the arrival of many bishops, it was impossible to start the council on June 7. And many of them not yet arrived. After waiting for 16 days, and St. Cyril waited for 16 days, St. Cyril decided to open the council on Sunday, June 21st, at St. Mary Cathedral. By this time, John of Antioch and his party did not yet arrive. Only two of his bishops had arrived, Alexander of Abimea and Alexander of Heriopolis. The traveler, they traveled a longer distance than John of Antioch and carried a letter for John of Antioch to St. Cyril informing him of his delay and that he should arrive after one week. They also gave him an oral message of John asking St. Cyril to start the council if he was delayed any further. St. Cyril decided to open the council and not to wait until John of Antioch arrival to Ephesus for the following reason. Number one, he already waited for 16 days and many bishops became sick. Many old bishops died because it was very hot and the resources of the Ephesus was limited and some of the old bishops get sick and some of them died just waiting again. Oh, he found it that is to wait more than 16 days, it will affect the bishops. Uh, he felt that the Antiochian bishop were fairly represented by two bishops, the two Alexander, and were anti yani, they support the Nestorius. Also, Bishop Odoret of Cyrus, the main theologian of the anti cyrillian party, had already arrived. Um, they have the main theologian already arrived, and two bishops of them. St. Cyril questioned the motivation of John's delay, especially since two Antiochian bishops, the two Alexander, have already arrived after traveling greater distances. And he came, they came from far than 
Jew, Antioch, but they arrived. So he said, why he didn't arrive? For he thought, Sam Siegel, maybe John might want to avoid being personally involved in the condemnation of his friend Mastoris. On Sunday, June 21st, 431, Saint Cyril sent an invitation to all the bishop who had already arrived to start the council meeting. Count Candidin protested along with 68 bishops led by Theodoret of Cyrus. But Saint Cyril proceeded with the preparation for the opening of the council, which took place, which took the whole day of Sunday, June 21. A special delegation was sent to Nostorius to summon him as a defendant. And they sent him the first delegation, ask him to come because he have to defend himself. The first session, the council, they have only, the first session was the main session and the decision is taken the first session. The first session. And also just to yeah, listen, how they take the decision and how the council to take a decision. The first session began on Monday morning, June 22, at St. Mary Cathedral, which shows that is the synod to meet in the church. We kept this tradition yani, until recently, when the Holy Synod of the Church to meet in the church. St. Cyril presided at the meeting. Peter, the Alexandrian priest, was appointed as a chief legal notary, yani, one to take notes. The council sent a delegation of three bishops and a lawyer to summon Nostorius for the second time. The canon is to call him three times. If he refused to come, then he lose his right. He did not come. 150 bishops attended the beginning of the session. Then 68 descendant bishops led by Bishop Theodoret of Cyrus came to protest against the opening of the council. Conte Candidon came with them, and he called the meeting illegal. San Siegel asked him to read the letter of emperor, which demonstrated his clear instruction to Kant not to intervene in theological discussion. Any council cannot be considered legal until they read the letter of the emperor. And the Kant have the letter. So that's why he asked him to read the letter. And he entered the council not to attend to protest, but he asked him to read it. And he read it. In the letter of the emperor, he, he asked the count not to interfere in any discussion, and to be neutral, just to keep order. After hearing the letter, the bishop asked the count to leave the meeting and not to interfere in the work of the council because this is an instruction of the emperor, which uh, it's mentioned in the letter. And they consider, uh, so ca ca El Conte left, followed by Sodoret and 26 of the 68 bishops. Yani, we must start by 155. Uh, now, uh, 26 of the 68 left and the, the, the other remain, lower 42. And then a 42 plus 155. However, reading the emperor letter by the emperor representative gave the council legitimate status according to the civil law of the empire. And now it's considered, because the letter is read, now they are official. The council sent a third and final delegation to Nostorius to come to the council, and he refused for the third time. At the request of Juvenal of Jerusalem, the Creed of Nicaea was read as a standard of orthodoxy to be followed. And this is the way which they follow. And this is not started debating, but just reading. So they read first the Creed, because this is the basis. Uh, and then after that, the second letter of St. Cyril to Nostorius was read. And Saint Cyril asked the father of the council whether his letter was in accordance with the creed of Nicaea. He asked them this question. And they read the creed firstly, and they read his letter. They asked whether he is in, in line with the creed. 100, 
to any folk bishop give a person acclamation of St. Cyril letter as an orthodox exposition. With 31 bishops also agreed. So they agreed. The reply of Nostorius to St. Cyril was read. And the father decreed, and they, this is his letter, that what is the response of Nostorius? Nostorius does not exist. But they read his letter to respond. When, he, <laughs> when they read his letter, the, the father shouted, whoever does not anathemize Nostorius, let him to be anathema. Such one, the Orthodox faith anathemize it, such one holy synod anathemize, whoever communicate with Nostorius, let him be anathema. We anathemize all the apostles of Nostorius. We all anathemize Nostorius as heretic. Let all such as communicate with Nostorius be anathema. But this is not the decision. This is the reaction. Then the synodical condemnation of Nostorius by Rome was read, followed by the synodical condemnation by synod of the Church of Alexandria, the third letter of St. Cyril to Nostorius, and the twelve anathema. Then the council moved to inquire what was Nostorius' response to this canonical, canonically delivered sentences against him. And when they sent him the sentence, what his, he repented or not? Because maybe they sent to him and he repented. So they asked what was his response. The Egyptian delegation who delivered the sentence to him in Constantinople in winter of three, 430 mentioned that he rejected the sentence. Then the council moved to confirm that the sentences were in full accord with the canon governing the prosecution uh, of anyone who refused to repent after receiving the synodical decree. The council heard witnesses from Akakios of Militane and Sodots of Ankara who confirmed that Nostorius still persisted in his heresy even while he was in Ephesus. And they said they still say the same things. After hearing this evidence, Flavian of Philippi moved that the council should read a patristic synopsis of doctrine on the nature of incarnation. Text gathered by St. Cyril was read. The most important of them was the letter of St. Athanasius to Epictetus, Epictetus and the letter of St. Gregory the theologian to Clodonius. Then a number of passages of the writing of Nostorius were read. After reading this, the council made the following decree. Yani, yani, some say in our they in rush com, 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 this, yani, give decision. Yani, all this read and all give a chance in the three delegation to, to him. Then the decision, the decision of the synod. As in addition to other things, the impious Nostorius has not obeyed our citation and did not receive the holy bishop who were sent by us to him. We were compelled to examine his ungodly doctrines. We discovered that he had held and published impious doctrine in his letter and treatise, as well as in discourses which he delivered in the city, in this city and which have been testified, compelled there to by the canons and uh, by the letter of our most holy father and fellow servant Celestine, the Roman bishop, we have come with many tears to this sorrowful sentence against him, namely that our Lord Jesus Christ, whom he has blasphemed, decree by the Holy Synod that Nostorius to be excluded from the Episcopal dignity and from all priestly uh, communion. 197 bishops signed the, the decree in the evening of Monday of June 22, 430, at the end of the first session. The number of bishops was more than 200 if the number of baroxy was added. The people of Ephesus were waiting all the day outside the cathedral, greeted the outcome of the council with great enthusiasm, and St. Cyril gave a very moving sermon on this, in this time 
which may be the, the introduction of the creed is related to this sigma. And sometimes we say the Ephesus, Council of Ephesus put the introduction. We, we, we exalt you. But actually, the council didn't put, put these things here. There is no addition or introduction to the creed. But it is taken from a sermon of St. Sigrid, either in this night or later on. St. Sigrid described it in the following words. When they heard that the wretched man, Min, was deposed, all began with one voice to cry out in praise of the Holy Council, glorifying God because of the enemy of the face had fallen. This is all happened on Monday, uh, the 21st. Then, next day, in the morning of Tuesday, June 23, it took the whole day until the evening. This first session, it took the whole day. And people was waiting outside the church, waiting to see what is that the decision. After this joyful night, then it came uh, the issues. In the morning of Tuesday, June 23, the notice of the position was delivered to Nestorius. Then Cyril sent a letter to Alexandria and Constantinople informing the clergy there of the deposition of Nestorius. So they were about to how he communicated. Yeah. And he sent it to the people of Alexandria, to people of Constantinople, and sent, of course, a report to the emperor. Nestorius uh, uh, Cyril sent the report about the proceeding of the council to the emperor asking for his uh, ratification, approval. Nestorius sent a formal appeal to the emperor complaining and protesting about what happened in the council and asked the emperor to dissolve the council and call another council to be held in or near Constantinople, which would only have one or two expert theologians from each province and who could debate issues with the face calmly and without prejudice. Cont Candidon pre prevented any legal action toward official approval, uh, toward the official approval of the council resolution. He did not allow any bishop to leave Ephesus and sent a formal report to the emperor informing him that he dismissed the council in ground it was a partisan meeting. When Emperor Theodosius received the three contradictory reports, one from St. Cyril saying that is what happened, one from uh, Nostorius, and one from his representative, El Conte, he was confused. He didn't know what to do. Then what happened after? John of Antioch arrived on Friday, June 26. Monday, now we reach it to Friday. He was very disappointed when he heard about the opening of the council and its resolution. He called his bishop to meet with Nostorius and his own bishops, a total of 43. Then I think have be two councils, the small one. Uh, attended. The majority council of Ephesus sent a delegation to John and his bishop informing them about the meeting of the council and its resolution. John and his bishop refused to receive the delegation and he proceeded in his own council. Cont Candidon read the official letter of the emperor and John of Antioch considered his little council of this 43 bishop was the legal council of Ephesus. The little council accused Cyril and Memnon of causing disorder in the city. The meeting focused on the 12th anathema of St. Cyril. So the Lord of Cyrus criticized the anathema. The bishop of the little council also declared that the 12th anathema were in agreement in the main with the wickedness of Arius, Abolinarius, and Nomius, and they excommunicated and deposed St. Cyril and Bishop Memnon of Ephesus. Later were prepared to be sent to the imperial court and people of Constantinople. The people of Ephesus rejected the degree of the little council and resisted the attempt of John of Antioch the bishop to consecrate a new bishop in Ephesus to replace Memnon. And he moved, excommunicated the bishop of Ephesus and want to ordain uh, someone in his. The reaction of Emperor Theodosius. A 
in June 29, uh, for, for, uh, 431 Emperor Sodusius sent an examining magistrate. Yeah, he decided to send someone else to examine what is going on there. Yeah. He called Validius, who arrived in Ephesus for June 29. And now we are reaching to uh, June 29. Uh, with the commission to find out exactly what was going on and to assist uh, Candidon to, to keep order. He ordered all the bishops to stay in Ephesus until interrogation were complete. Meanwhile, the monks in Constantinople organized a procession to the imperial palace to plead with the emperor to confirm the result of the council offices, and the emperor received them politely, asked for their prayer, and dismissed them. Validius returned to Constantinople with a delegation from the council of the majority who presented their case to the emperor, Count Arrhenius, made a personal visit to royal court in behalf of his friend Nostorius. By this time, emperor received the acts of the little council, so Odysseus decided to ratify the resolution of the two councils and accepted their respective deposition of Nostorius, Cyril, and Memnon. The people of Constantinople continued to demonstrate, asking the emperor to ratify the Syrian, the, the, the majority council. When he, they heard the decision of the emperor, they protested the deposition of St. Cyril and Memnon, while they welcomed the deposition of Nostorius. So the emperor decided to send imperial high treasurer, treasurer John to Ephesus to re replace the Count Candido. The report of, of the little council, he decided to accept both of them. And he deposed the three, the three of them. And about how the people in Constantinople, they moved and protested against this. So he sent another one. On Friday, like in lesser council better continue because San Cyril was not aware about the decision of the emperor to depose him or accepted the little council. So he continued the meeting. On Friday, July 10, now we reach it to July, July 10, the Roman delegation arrived from Rome and San Cyril is still unaware of the emperor's decree to depose him. At once, we convened the council. The second session, the yeah, first session, can it twenty first Monday, second session in July tenth. The, the second session of all the original members, about two hundred, also attended the first session, resembled in Memnon Episcopal residence to listen to the to listen to the letter of Pope Celestine. And the Pope requested the confirmation of the Roman Synod decision which condemned my stories. The third session was held on Saturday, July 11, in Memnon residence. In this session, the Roman delegate formally accepted and signed the acts of the previous two sessions of the Council. Letters were sent again to Emperor and the clergy of Constantinople requesting ratification of the decree of the Council. Fourth session was held on Thursday, July 16, at St. Mary Cathedral to discuss the situation of John's Antioch. They sent delegation to summon John and his bishop. He did not come. A second delegation was sent with the same result. Fifth session was held in July 17. A third and final delegation was sent to John and his bishop. Again, they did not come. The council proceeded to judge John's action against St. Cyril and Memnon as wholly unjust and uncanonical perform. The council passed a sentence against John and the 34 of his companion bishop, executed them and suspended their rights in ecclesiastical jurisdiction. They sent their decision to the emperor. Sixth session was held in Wednesday, July 22. The council heard a petition of priest Crisius, who was suspended by his bishop, who was among John of Antioch party. Petition was heard from the Baphilian bishops seeking confirmation of their policy to admit certain schismatic to full communion and other issues here. The council 
ended the session with a canon to affect uh, that the, the, the Nicene Creed alone was a legitimate symbol of universal church. The seventh and final session was held on Friday, July 31, at St. Mary Cathedral. The Synod recognized the independence of the Church of Cyrus, Cyprus, and the Council issued six disciplinary canon to reinstate clergy deposed by Nestorius and warned those who would not abide by the Council decree and they would be deposed and communicated. The Belgian bishops who had appealed to the court of Constantinople also were condemned. <laughs> the council finished. We can show by the emperor what to happen. After the council concluded his session in July 31, high treasurer Count John arrived to Ephesus. At the beginning of August, he took control of the city summoned all the bishops to his lodging for plenary session when all the bishops gathered, including Nostorius, John of Antioch, Count John, announced the emperor's decision on ratifying the, degrees, the, the decrees of the two synods and confirmed sentences against St. Cyril, Memnon, and Nostorius. The bishop were ordered to leave and St. Cyril, Memnon, and Nostorius was taken to, to the prison. This is the time when he, they put in prison, the three of them. John of Antioch abandoned Nostorius and agreed with the emperor policy. The bishop of the council supported St. Cyril and Memnon and appealed to the emperor to release them and not to depend on false report. They sent a formal delegation with a petition to the emperor requesting him to disregard all false report and to confirm only their decree. On the other side, Count Irenaeus went to Constantinople to lobby for Nostorius. Emperor Sodosius decided to summon a small group of delegates from each party to debate the case in his presence on, at the capital. On September 3, Sodosius reconfirmed the deposition of Nostorius and allowed him to leave Ephesus and to return to his monastery in Antioch. On September 11, Theodosius opened the theological meeting, Glocky and at Chalcedon. He listened to the debate of the two parties. At, at the end of first session, he asked every party to present his position in written paper. Four other sessions of the Chalcedonian Glocky were held during September and October. At the end of this session, John of Antioch and his party accepted the title Theotokos, the singleness of the Lord's person, the inseparable union of two natures of Christ. They did not accept the 12 anathema of St. Cyril, and the Cyrillian party are presented the explanation of the 12 anathema written by St. Cyril. On Sunday, October 25th, Maximian was consecrated Archbishop of Constantinople, replacing uh, Nostorius, Emperor Sordosius asked uh, the Cyrillian bishops to take part on the ceremony, while Antiochian party received no invitation. Finally, Emperor Sordosius announced his final decision regarding the Council of Ephesus, which was in favor of the majority council. Nestorius' deposition was to be final. The accusation of Apollinarianism and against St. Cyril was to be dismissed as a false accusation. The Antiochian should also be accepted as orthodox in their uh, doctrine. And Emperor Theodosius officially commanded the dissolution of the council and gave permission to Bishop Memnon to resume his duty of Ephesus and St. Cyril to return to Alexander. St. Cyril left Ephesus in October 31, 431 and was received as a hero of faith in Alexandria. And then after that, he continued until his uh, rest in the world in 444, just explaining uh, and defending Ephesus. And of course, uh, in, in 433, that is, was a reconciliation with John, which uh, Father George will speak yani, uh, uh, about it. And just to give you 
how things was not an easy, and how uh, the details, some of the details about what is, was going on, but how St. Cyril could navigate through all these difficulties and come at the end with this uh, yani victory of faith, uh, and which we enjoy till today, uh, that is through his, his work. May the intercession and prayer of San Siegel to be with us all and glory to God now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Any question? Yeah. Yes. When was his story came to Egypt and who took that decision? I think it's later on, yeah, maybe he went to Antioch, the monastery, and then after that uh, this happened. Yeah, and this is our record about <coughs> sending to Khmim uh, there. Yeah. Uh, some they say to send to the desert in Egypt, but where exactly to, uh, to be sent there? Yeah. Uh, when we were growing up in Egypt many years ago, we always referred to St. Mary as the birth giver of God. We never referred to her as a mother of God. We never said Ilea, and we never said Omni Ilea. And even though the word mother is very similar to word uh, birth giver, but it's more inclusive. It includes um, origin of matter. And this is the word mother, comes from matter. So here in the English language, we are more liberal about using the word mother of God. So how can we reconcile the two together? When we did the translation of the liturgy, we came to this issue. Uh, we find that as the mother of God does not give the meaning, because it could be a mother, but without giving birth, yani be a mother. Uh, uh, but it is important that is he took his human nature from here. That's very important part. And birth giver is yani, in English, yani is the English ears is not be yani. Uh, familiar with. That's why we decided to keep Theotokos. And in the liturgy, in the liturgy book, we come to, uh, we don't, uh, we did not put birth giver nor mother of God. We put Theotokos. Because the word Theotokos give a meaning which the mother of God cannot give, as you mentioned. And also, birth giver, and it's very hard. And for Arabi, أنا بما بقولش بنقول والدة الإله يعني والدة الإله أقوى من أم الله لكن في الإنجليزي ما أعرفش بس جيفر زي مثلاً بانتوكراتو يعني Almighty is not giving the meaning ففي بعض الإكسبريشن which in the translation is not giving the the full meaning that's we kept as it is يعني شوف بانتوكراتو we say theotokos like logos and the word logos Greek, if you have the expert in Greek. <laughs> it's not word, يعني word in English, or حتى كلمة بالعربي. ما بتديش المعنى بتاع لوجوس في الجريك يعني. فده مشكلة الترانسليشن. عشان كده في الترانسليشن sometimes we just keep the word as it is uh, عشان ندي المين. Yeah, you are right. Yes. يعني فور طبعا سان سيغل اني وان تو تيك اني بوزيشن بيبول ويل اجري بيقول بس اجري يعني ذاتس واي سان سيغل بيبول بوت هيم از ا سين بيبول لايك سودوريت اوف سايروس يعني اند ذير ار ستيل سام بيبول ان ذا بوك اوف هيستوري ذات از ذي ساي ماني ثينجز اجينست هيم يعني هي از انفولفد فور ذا بوزيشن اوف سان جون كريزوستوم هي ديلايت اكسبتينج هيم انتل 417 and sending uh, gifts. Uh, some look to him as a very pol political, some accuse him of the killing of Hypatia, of Alexandria. And there are many things like this existing, which understandable, because he man, he took composition. Of course, people will, will attack him. 
And there is a saying of His Holiness Bob Shunud of blessed memory, al kalimat al haq tut'ab wa turayyah. And the word of truth, people will happy with it, people who are very angry with it. When you say the word of truth, people will divide. And the Lord said the same, I, I came not to bring peace, but to bring salt. <laughs> because people will be divided against him. But this is the first issue. So we know that we defend that. I mean, we don't depend on one, resource, one source, but we read the history. There is no book says the history, the history. We read different histories and try to understand uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and to have a response to this, this accusation, yeah, and like Masan, the gifts. Yes, he sent. I have a list of what he sent, details. If he gave him bribes, how to write it in a letter? <laughs> and, and if you give him, you don't write it, give it secretly. But this is the common sense which existed at that, at that time. Generally speaking, in how we face criticism. We classify the people who criticize us in three groups. One group, they criticize us, but they have a reason for that. There is something wrong which we do, and this criticism help us to improve. So have, you should not be sensitive for any criticism. No, no one above criticism, no one infallible. So that's why we encourage people, if they find something which is wrong, to tell us if what they are saying is right. So we correct it. This helps us to be improved. And this group, we, like, we, we, we should encourage them and not to be sensitive to them. Because we don't expect anything to do and no everybody will agree. And this is to help us to be ready to answer. And when I take a decision, why I do this? Because somebody will challenge me. And that is the first group. The second group is a group with people, they have a reason. Ah, the first group, they have reason and they express himself in a good way. And they come and say, I, this is wrong, or I see, I'll ask a question, why you do this? That is the first group. Second group, they have point, but they express it in, in a bad way. And start by attacking. Uh, so the way which uh, Yang express it is very Yang anointing. That's why this group is more challenging group. Because if we focus on the way which they express themselves, we miss the point, which they want to say. So you have to be very patient and to go beyond the, the way they are expressing their point. Just wait, maybe behind this. And when I, send, I receive a letter, with all attacks, I read it. Because maybe within this attack, a point, but the, the person cannot express himself yet. The third group, this is the easy group. These people, they have no point and no way. They just attack for attacking. So don't care for this group of people. Don't listen to them. Don't pay attention to them. Just pray for them. Because you could distract you from doing good. They just want to criticize everything to criticize. The way of criticism is very bad. They are very loud. And sometimes the challenge of these people in Nahna to focus on them. And we spend our time and our energy how to respond. And they will not accept anything because they live on the criticism. They like to criticize. Maybe there's some hatred. You want to know. But like the Christ met with the Pharisees. They see the miracle, but interpret differently. They do a miracle on Sabbath, they explain to them, and no way. 
But this is um, the three groups which I always, because of course we deal with many criticism, but we, I always classify them. First group, point, good way. This is the best way, people who like this people. <laughs> Another group, more challenging, they have a point, but they express themselves in a bad way. We don't, because not, not everybody is objective. And people cannot make differentiation between the behavior and the person. Usually I put them together and attack. And, and it's different between attacking the person and attacking the behavior of the person. يعني فرق بين تقول واحد تقول واحد زي المسيح مثلا لما قال للسامريتان وومن قال what you said is right you said it rightly but he sh she didn't say to you are truthful woman the same واحد مثلا واحد يقول كلام not right فممكن تقول you are liar different than what you are say is not true and a liar, يعني, you are a liar. You, you, you lib him in a certain way. But here, the person has to distinguish between the behavior of the wrong. You can say one person is wrong, but it doesn't mean that the rest of them are wrong. It means to correct them. And of course, the group of the third, unfortunately, which is always a high voice, loudly, speaking, وطبعاً ما ما multiply it or amplify it by the social media. And uh, you know these groups, just don't listen to them. Any other question? Yes. There are many books about San Zeger which you can help يعني, on that. يعني. Uh, um, can, uh, Father George to give you a bibliography of books, many good books about San Zeger, about his life, whether in Arabic or in English or many other uh, يعني, languages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 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 Father John McKicken on the San Zeger and the, the Christological controversy. There are books also by Father George. So I can tell you a list of these good books. Uh, uh, we thank, we thank you again.